All right, so let's try to fix that pesky little bug that we have, whereby if I open the applications panel and if I add a username of some sort and I hit refresh, then we get the menu item to, to show up and potentially, you know, we could, well, we're not seeing the reviews for uh, an obvious reason because our code is now broken, but this is not the best um, security that we have in place. Also, if I just add a JWT with another value, that could also lead to some weird uh, bugs all over the place. So we want to make, uh, we want to set a very strict control over this access to the cookie and what we do with it. Now, luckily for us, um, we can do this relatively easy by modifying two of our files. So first I'm going to modify auth js and i'm going to go to this place that says get user from local cookie which currently just says hey take that cookie uh take the cookie value of username if it's there everything's fine but we know that's not the case so what can we do well luckily for us strappy does expose a slash user slash me endpoint and for that endpoint, we need to specify a valid JSON web token. And if we do that, we get information returned to us about the currently logged in user. So what we can do, we can take the JSON web token from the cookies. We can send that to Strapi and Strapi will verify and return us the username. So that's going to be a much better approach that we need to enable. So let's actually get rid of this and I'm going to paste the code in. So I'm going to get the JSON web token from the local cookie. If it exists, then I'm going to go and fetch slash users slash me, passing in the appropriate token. And then I'm just going to return the data.username. Now, because I'm returning fetcher and I'm essentially returning a promise here, I also will need to go into my auth context file and I need to make a teeny tiny change in here especially in the, let's see, uh, right here in the use fetcher um, method, namely in the user fact, because this get user from local cookie now returns a promise, I need to call this with the await syntax. And so I will need to say const, uh, let's call this, how should we call it, resolve user. And this is going to be an asynchronous arrow function and this whole thing is going to be part of that and now we can use the await keyword so now we're actually going to await for this method to finish which is this whole fetcher thing and if that is the case then we're going to go resolve user here and hopefully this is going to now solve our issues so in here we're still returning the right username and we can set that right here inside this asynchronous function so let's restart our process let's go to the browser and let's actually go back to the main page let's remove all of this nonsense and let's see if everything works just by looking at films okay film data is still there no reviews let's log in test one two three four and I see the reviews and I see uh, the right menu as well. So let's hit log out. And now that information is gone. Okay, so let's go into application and let's try to add the username cookie with a value and hit refresh. And righteously, nothing happens. Let's add the JSON web token and let's try to add a value for that as well. Hit refresh. And again, look at that, nothing is happening. Now, if you have some invalid data in here, what will happen though, if you click films and if you click on an actual film that has some reviews, well, you're going to get all sorts of weird um, errors purely because the JSON web token data that you're sending is incorrect. So if I go to slug, where is it? Where I'm asking for the data, right here this basically fails right because i'm not passing in a valid json web token so that it can't really read the film response 
Uh, in fact, if I just do this so that you can see what's going on, just log out film response right here. Go back here, do a refresh, come back to my console. You will see that I have an unauthorized error missing or invalid credentials. And let's send error dot and what was it? Let's send the uh, message. Okay, so now that we send the message, we can change the layout based on so let's not forget okay let's yeah it's already there so i'm um, extracting the error from the props and once we have the error prop then we could do something like if error let's just do it this way and then we could return the layout and just say in a paragraph let's just print the error itself otherwise we could return what we had before which was the layout and like so okay so in this case we're going to be returning an error or we could do if i've done this correctly so we're going to try to grab that and if we don't have a JSON web token, then we're going to catch a certain error. And in our case, let's just make sure that this is correct. So film response, actually the error is going to be related to something else in this case, because film response has an error property now. So maybe we could do, but we can leave that catch props error there but we could also say something like if film response dot data then please return this otherwise return and then we're going to just return what we had here before okay so in this case and probably we could you can leave this catch block here if you want to, although I am now going to just remove the try catch bit because that's that's catching a different error. So, you know, let's not worry about that for now. Um, and hopefully, if I've done everything correctly and just return those props, so instead of the error prop, now we need to do some conditional rendering in here as well. So if there's an error, then we're going to do that and error should be true because now we're sending it right here but we're not sending it there so film response dot data is null and then we do have the error let's just see if this works uh no in fact it doesn't because we're still trying to read the data for yeah so we need to move the plot into here as well and then hopefully we're going to get error and then in here we actually need to say we need to get the error message right which is film response film response dot error dot message and now if we go back to the app we now get invalid credentials because you know the jwt doesn't match anything but if we um if we actually log in, then we have everything in order. Okay, and now our application works and it is as secure as it gets. Okay, so in the last video for this particular section, we are going to take a look at how to register a user. So we're going to take a look at the register part as well as the profile page with an image upload so that we display the actual profile image of a given user. And then after that, we're going to take a look at deployment as well.